The Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of Parquet Margarine. Millions of women all over America serve Parquet because it tastes so good. Why, Parquet tastes like it should cost twice as much. To market, to market, to get some Parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You like it, you love it, like millions who say their favorite margarine is. P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. Well, it's a pleasant Sunday afternoon in Summerfield. The kind of a day when it's nice to get out of the house and stroll in the crisp autumn air. And that's just what the great Gildersleeve and his niece Marjorie are doing. Accompanied by the baby who's viewing the world with curious eyes from the carriage. Let me push the baby for a while, Uncle. All right, my dear, if you want to. <laughs> Doesn't she look cute in her little beret? Just like a doll. Hello, baby. Enjoying your ride? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish she were mine. Well, you'll be married someday, maybe, when you're a little older than 16. Gildy. Huh? What was that? Oh, hello, Hooker. Hello, Gildy. Afternoon, Marjorie. Hello, Jack. You know, Gildy, from the back, Marjorie and you look just like Beauty and the Blimp. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. Good afternoon, baby. Kitchy, 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 coo. <laughs> Why, she's laughing. Who wouldn't, looking at you in that green cape, you old goat? <laughs> Doesn't the baby look sweet today, Judge? She certainly does, just like a little cherry bin. I just hope we can keep her forever. Well, it seems to me if the parents were coming back, we'd have heard from them by now. Well, we'd sure like to keep her, Judge. In that case, my recommendation is that you legally adopt the child. Adopt her? Yes. If you don't, she could be taken away from you at any time. She could? Well, I'll adopt her then. I'll do it right away. Just one thing, Gildy. To adopt a baby in this state, you have to be married. Married? Uh, guess I'll wait a little while. <laughs> That's what I thought. There's no hurry. Could they really take the baby away, Judge? No, they could, my dear. Uncle Mort, you've got to get married. Huh? Well, you've got to for the baby. No, Marjorie, don't be ridiculous. Just don't rush into a thing like this. Besides, I'd have to find somebody to marry first. That shouldn't be hard for you, Gildy. You've been engaged to every female in town. <laughs> All right, Judge. Anyway, I'm not getting married. Onky. And nobody's going to take the baby away. Well, according to the law. According to the law. This is Sunday, Judge. Why don't you relax? Well, I see my legal advice is wasted. Good day. Good day, you old goat. <laughs> old bad news tonight. Spoil the whole afternoon. Me get married. What an idea. Uncle Mort? Yeah? You're right. I don't think you should get married. Well, that's good. I think I should. Huh? I'll make the sacrifice. Now, Marjorie? Well, it's all right. I don't mind. And the baby can come and live with me and my husband. Husband? What husband? Oh, that's a mere detail. Oh, of course. Well, I'll marry Ben or somebody. Ben, you'll do no such thing. And after we settle down in a vine-covered cottage, you can come and see the baby anytime, Grandpa. Grandpa? Oh, thank you very much. I'll hobble over sometime. Oh, don't you worry, darling. Marjorie will look after you. Yes, yes. Come on, little mother. Grandpa's tired and wants to go home. <laughs> Baby, don't you think it's about your bedtime? <laughs> oh? <laughs> well, all right, you can stay up a little while longer then. <laughs> You're cute, all right. We gotta pick out a name for you one of these days. Uncle Mort? Yes? How do I look? Huh? 
Kitty, 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 kitty. Now, Unky, stop looking at the baby a minute. Look at me. Well, you look wonderful, my dear. Well, thank you. Do you like my hair up this way? Sure. What are you all dressed up for? Are you going to a party or something? No. Somebody's coming over. Oh, who? Ben. Oh? You mean your uh, future husband? Maybe. Little Marjorie with the family. The Bobby Sox bride here. <laughs> It isn't funny. Oh, well, Ben here is he's going to be a father. <laughs> I hate to see you disappointed, my dear, but Ben is much too sensible to get involved in anything like this. Hi. Oh, hello, Leroy. Well, look at Marge, all dressed up. Yep. Congratulations, Leroy. What? You're about to become a brother-in-law. Brother-in-law? Yeah. Haven't you heard? Marjorie and Ben are going to get married. Are you kidding? Of course, Ben doesn't know about it yet. Oh, I get it. One of Marge's goofy ideas. Here comes the bride, wiggling from side to side. <laughs> Leroy Forrester, you stop that. Oh, that's Ben. I'll get it. <laughs> she girls get funny ideas, don't they? Well, we'll just have to humor her, my boy. She means well. Oh, good evening, Ben. Hi, Marge. It's awfully nice to see you again. It's awfully nice to see you again. Quiet, Leroy. <laughs> Hello, Miss Gillisley. Hello, Ben. Hello, Leroy. Hi, brother-in-law. <laughs> what? Uh, Leroy, I think you'd better go upstairs now and do your homework. Yeah, okay. Good night, everybody. Ta ta ta! Leroy! Hey, what's the matter with him? Uh, nothing, Ben. Just got a silly streak, I guess. <laughs> Growing boy, you know. Oh. Sit down, Ben. Thanks. Uncle Mort? Hmm? Yes, my dear? What, don't you have some work to do tonight? In the den? Work? Oh, yes. Yes, I'm going. <laughs> Good night, Ben. I'm off to the den. <laughs> <laughs> Is somebody going to be surprised? <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter with everybody tonight? Oh, nothing. Well, what do you want to do tonight, Marsh? Go to the movies? No. Let's just stay here. Well, if you want to. I think when people get older, they get tired of running around to movies and things. They want to stay home and enjoy family life. Don't you think so? Yeah, I guess so. I kind of like the movies myself. <laughs> well, I think it'll be fun for us to stay home with the baby. The baby? Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't see her there. <laughs> Isn't she cute? Yeah. Hello, little darling. <laughs> Do you like baby girls? Yeah, I like baby girls. You do? That's wonderful. It is? Uh-huh. Would you like to hold the baby? Well, I... <laughs> uh, come on, Dan. Oh, gee, I don't know. Well, you ought to learn sometime. It might come in handy. Here, I'll lift her up. Uh, now, you take her. Wait a minute. Gosh, I don't think... Oh, go on. She won't bite you. Well... Which end do you take first? Here, I'll put her on your lap. There. You look so natural holding her. I don't feel natural. You like Papa Ben, don't you, baby? Papa Ben? Doesn't that sound nice? Well, I, I don't know. Maybe you'd better take her, Marge. Here, huh? Now, oh, what's the matter with her? Well, she wants to stay with you, that's all. Oh, okay. You can stay, baby. Marjorie, did I hear the baby crying? Oh, she's all right now, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, that's good. <laughs> she just wants to stay with Papa Ben. Papa Ben? <laughs> Funny how fast you can get attached to a baby. Yeah, it certainly is. Papa Ben, I wonder if he's kidding. <laughs> oh, you still here, Miss Gill, please? Yes, Bertie. I thought you'd gone to work. More coffee? No, thanks. <laughs> you feel all right, Miss Gilsey? Yes, I'm just thinking. Oh? I'm a little concerned about Marjorie. 
This idea of hers about marrying Ben. Oh, don't you worry, Mr. Gillsleeve. She'll get over that. Girls that age change their minds every day. Well, I don't know. The way those kids were acting last night. Ben bouncing that baby on his knee. Papa Ben, he says. He's got a good job at that gas station. They could get married. Oh, I think Mr. Ben's too sensible to do that. Bertie, a woman can make a monkey out of any man, I know. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jeff, Mr. Gillsleeve, this will blow over. They always do. You remember last year when she wanted to marry her French teacher, Andre, whatchamacallit? And then there was that Yale leader, and then she had a terrible crush on that Wally Hoff. Wally Hoff? You remember him, kind of wild. The minute he'd come in, he'd roll up the rug and grab Marjorie and start jitterbugging. Oh, yes, that one. And then he'd sit down and start banging the piano. A <laughs> root Yes, I remember, Bertie. He was a wild Indian, all right. Well, Miss Marjorie sure was crazy about him. Yeah, she was, wasn't she? See, I wonder if it might work. What's that, Mr. Gilsey? Bertie, you're giving me a great idea. I think I'll just invite Wally Hoff over. What? Well, maybe a little jitterbugging is what Marjorie needs. Get her mind off this marriage idea. Yes, sir? I'll invite him over tonight. Surprise, Marjorie. That'll surprise him, all right. Well, if he's coming over tonight, I better nail down all the furniture. <laughs> you know, I feel better already, Bertie. Guess I'll kind of jitterbug off to work. Root toot 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 dee, root toot 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 dee. I'll get it. Yeah, that must be Wally. Well, good evening, Wally. Hiya, General. Yeah, General. <laughs> <laughs> come in. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Well, I'm glad you could come over, Wally. Haven't seen you for a long time. That's right, General. <laughs> yes, I didn't tell Marjorie you were coming, son. I wanted to surprise her. I know she'll be awful glad to see you. Oh, sure. Leave his face at the girl's mad about me. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are we waiting for, General? Roll up the rugs and come on, chillin'. Yes, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we better wait for Marjorie. Uh, I don't oh. jitterbug myself. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh -huh. That's a good one. <laughs> well, I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> well, before Marjorie comes down, Wally, I'd like to explain why I asked you over. Oh, sure. Uh, what's up, Doc? Yeah. <laughs> well, you see, Wally. Oh, right ahead. I'll just speed out a little boogie while you're talking. Yeah. Wally! Wally! Stop that. Okie dokie, General. Uh, you just listen a minute. Shoot. You see, Marjorie wants to get married, Wally, and that's why I asked you over. Married? i uh, see you later, General. Uh, come back here, Wally. It's not you. She wants to marry Ben. Oh, Ben. I thought maybe if she saw you again, she might forget about Ben. Oh, I get it. Well, your worries are over. I can beat out that square from Delaware. He's from Illinois. <laughs> well, for heaven's Hiya, Marge. Uh, hello, Marjorie. Wally Hoff, what are you doing over here? Well, you see, my dear, I invited him. I... You invited him? Yes, I thought you might want to do a little jitterbugging. Oh, sure. Let's get groovy, smoothie. You... <laughs> jitterbugging is puerile and adolescent, and for your information, I have a date with Ben tonight. That character... You look here, Wally Hoff. That galoot in the corny suit? No, Wally. Well, at least Ben isn't a callow youth like you. He's the kind of a boy a girl could settle down with. Who wants to settle down? Well, don't worry. Nobody would with you. You're irresponsible and, and lazy, and you'll never amount to anything. Is that so? He's only kidding, Wally. I am not. And after seeing you, I appreciate Ben all the more. Well, if that's the way you feel, I'll leave. Wally! I wish you would. Marjorie! I will. Goodbye. Wally, come back. I'll turn on the radio. Come on, children. Yes, Dan. <laughs> New Ford Sedans, 1949 Ford Sedans. Yes, big, powerful 1949 Ford Sedans are waiting for owners. 
20 of those streamlined beauties are being won in Parquet Margarine's big $50,000 contest series. And the grand prize winner gets a $1,000 bonus to go with the Ford he wins. But here, you'll want to know about all of the 721 prizes. Each week for five weeks, Parquet is awarding four beautiful new Ford sedans, 40 General Electric table radios, 20 Corey coffee makers, 20 Toastmaster automatic pop-up toasters, 60 new $10 bills. Now, all you do is help the great Gildersleeve get a name for the pretty little baby girl he found some weeks ago. Just write your suggested name for the Gildersleeve baby on a contest entry blank. They're available at your food dealers with complete rules. Or use a plain piece of paper. Send entry with one red flap from the end of a package of Parquet Margarine and your name and address to Parquet Margarine, Box 736, Chicago 77, Illinois. Be sure to enclose your Parquet dealer's name and address. Make a bid for your new beautiful 1949 Ford. But hurry, this second week's contest closes this Saturday. Mail your entry to Parquet Margarine, Box 736, Chicago 77, Illinois, now. And now let's rejoin the great Gildersleeve. It's the following evening now. Marjorie still hears wedding bells ringing in her ears. So does the great Gildersleeve, and it's giving him a headache. Now, my dear, please listen to me. I'm listening, Uncle Mort. Don't you think this marriage idea has gone far enough? I understand you're doing this for the baby, but nobody's going to take the baby away just because... I'm not taking any chances. And no sacrifice is too great for that baby, Unky. No, Marjorie. Oh, you just don't understand. You've never been a mother. Huh? Well, no, I haven't. <laughs> but remember, I'm the one that found that baby in the parking lot. That makes me a kind of a stepmother. <laughs> you're quaint. Quaint? Oh, my goodness. In the first place, you're not in love with Ben. Oh, but I can learn to love him. And at least Baby and I will have a home. He God. Ben can support us in what he makes at the gas station. And I can help out at the station, too. Sure, and you can put the baby to work wiping windshields. <laughs> oh, Unky. Well, I just hope Ben isn't as silly about this thing as you are. Well, he doesn't think it's silly. He doesn't? You mean you asked him about this? Well, I gave him a little hint. I asked him how he'd like to be married and have a little baby girl. Some hint. <laughs> what did he say? Well, he didn't say anything. You know how bashful he is. He just blushed and changed the subject right away. Uh-huh. Marjorie, I think you're just building the whole thing up in your mind. So if you... Mm, excuse me. Hello? Hello, uh, Mr. Gillespie. This is Ben. Oh? Uh, oh, I suppose you want to speak to Marjorie. Just a minute. I'll... Uh, Mr. Gillespie... I want to talk to you. Oh, you do? Yeah, awful important. About me and Marjorie. And uh, you and Marjorie? Yeah. I guess I ought to speak to you first. Can I see you alone if I can come right over? Alone? Oh, sure. Thanks, Mr. Gillespie. Thanks a lot. Bye. Goodbye. Who was it, Donkey? Goodbye. I mean, Ben. <laughs> He's coming over, and he wants to talk to me alone. Oh, I knew it. He wants to ask you for my hand. Huh? Oh, I'm so happy. So am I. <laughs> Miss Gill, please. Come in, Bertie. Miss Gill, please. Miss Ben, wait and see you. Oh, yeah. Tell him to come right in. Eh? Yes, sir. Mr. Gillespie's right here in the den. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mr. Gillespie. Oh, hello, Ben. <laughs> Come in. Thank you. I hope you don't mind me dropping in like this. Not at all. Sit down. Thank you. Have a cigar. Oh, I forgot. You don't smoke, do you? No, sir. Too dangerous around the gasoline pumps. <laughs> yes, that's right. I'd hate to see gasoline go any higher. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah? Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh-huh. Well, you know, I, I think a lot of Marjorie. Oh? And I like that baby, too. Yes, I know. 
Papa Ben. <laughs> That's why I thought I ought to have a talk with you myself. Yeah? Well, the last couple of days, Marge has been talking a lot about getting married. I think she'd make a wonderful wife. You do? Yeah. But, gosh, I don't want to get married. You don't? No, sir. Gee, I hope you don't mind. Mind? Not at all. Oh, that's good. I thought you might be sore. No. <laughs> well, I'm glad of that. Marge is still pretty young, and, well, I'm trying to save my money so I can have a gas station of my own someday. That's a spirit, Ben. Of course, I might have to start with just one pump. <laughs> well, you know what they say. One pump is better than none. <laughs> I guess that's right. Yeah. Stick to it, Ben. I want you to know when you get your station, I'll buy all my gas from you. Gee, thanks. Yeah, don't mention it. And that goes for your grease, my grease job. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> thanks for everything, Mr. Gillespie. You don't know how relieved I am. Yeah, you don't know how relieved I am. <laughs> Here, have a cigar. Oh, I forgot. Gasoline pump. <laughs> I'll smoke it myself. Well, goodbye, Mr. Gillespie. Hey, goodbye, Ben. Bye. Oh, brother, I'm glad that's over here. Hope Marjorie won't take this too hard. Oh, well, she'll get over this idea. Kind of cute of her, though, wanting to get married. <laughs> uh, these kids. Miss Gill, please? Yes, Bertie? There's somebody else here to see you. Oh, who's that? Mr. Wally Hall. Wally? What does he want? Show him in, Bertie. Yes, sir. There's a lot of traffic around here tonight. This must be you, sweet. <laughs> Well, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, hello, Wally. Come in and sit down. Thank you. Well, how's the jitterbug champ tonight? I've given up jitterbugging, sir. Huh? I think it's pure aisle and adolescent. Mr. Gildersleeve, you're looking at a changed man. What's the matter with you, Wally? Well, you know, Marjorie said some pretty rough things about me last night. Oh, Wally, I wouldn't worry about that. I'm sure she didn't. Oh, she was right. It's time I settled down and amounted to something. Started to think about the real things in life. A job, marriage. Marriage? I think it's wonderful, Marjorie, wanting to make a home for that baby. And if Ben won't marry her, I will. What? Mr. Gildersleeve, you're looking at your future son-in-law. I am not. <laughs> and don't worry, I can support Marjorie, all right. I just got a job at the mall shop after school. Look, Wally. I make six dollars a week. That's fine. Why, you couldn't even pay your rent. I know, but we can move in with you. Oh. <laughs> We'll get married right away, if you'll just loan me the $5 for the ring. You won't need a ring. Young man, you leave the premises and don't come back. Mr. Gildersleeve, you can't stand between me and Marjorie and the baby. No matter how you try to stop us, I'll find a way. Then find your way out of here. Good night. <laughs> Good evening, P.V. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can your neighborhood druggist do for you this evening? Oh, nothing, really. I just came in for a little visit. Oh. Uh, it's nine o'clock. I was just about to close up. Well, I won't detain you. I suppose you're in a hurry to get home to Mrs. P.V. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Sit down. Stay a while. Yeah, uh, thanks. Uh, uh, What's your trouble, Mr. Gildersleeve? Oh, it's nothing serious. Well, it wouldn't hurt to tell me. Well... Maybe I could cheer you up a bit. It's just that Marjorie's got some silly idea about getting married. Oh? Yeah, now she's giving that Wally Hoff the bug. There's nothing to worry about. Those kids will never get married. Mm, I don't know. What? They might. You think so? Mm, on the other hand, they might not. So don't worry about it, Mr. Gildersleeve. Cheer up. Yeah, thanks, P.V. Anyway, they're much too young to get married. High school kids. Yeah. Of course, you read every day about high school kids getting married. You do? Yes, but they probably won't, so don't worry, Mr. Gildersleeve. Cheer up. <laughs> yeah, thanks, P.B. Anyway, they can't get married. I won't give my consent. That's all right. Of course, they could elope. Elope? Oh, they wouldn't do that. I did. You eloped, P.B.? <laughs> yeah, I certainly did. Mrs. Peavy's father wouldn't give his consent either, so one night we just sneaked out of the house and ran off in my Stutch Bearcat. You did? Yes, sir. Her father didn't stop us from getting married. Sometimes I wish he had. 
Well, thanks, P.B. This is all very encouraging. Yeah, I'm glad. If... You know, it's funny how impetuous young people can be. Why, for all you know, Wally and Marjorie might be eloping right now. What? Yes, sir. Right this very moment while you were sitting on that stool. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, where are you going? I'm going home, and thanks very much for cheering me up. Oh, not at all. Glad to be of service. Oh, for a good night. That Peavy's a big help. wonder if those kids would elope. Well, they might. If Peavy can elope, anybody can. They might be running away right now. I'd better hurry home. There's the house. I've got to stop them. Hope I'm not too late. My poor little Marjorie, a child bride. Marjorie! Marjorie! Hello, Gildy. Oh, Hooker, what are you doing here in that black suit? Where's Marjorie? She's right here. Oh, Auntie. Marjorie, then you didn't elope. Elope? I thought maybe you and Wally Hoff... Had... Well, he did call and propose. It was sweet of him, but of course I couldn't marry him. What? Well, I've changed my mind, Uncle Mort. I'm not going to marry anybody. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes, it is. You keep out of this, Hooker. You're the one that started this whole thing, you old busybody. But it was the judge who made me change my mind. It was? Well, I always said you were a fine fellow, Judge. <laughs> Thank you, Gildy. I felt it was my duty to have a little talk with Marjorie. I've just explained to her that she couldn't adopt the baby, even if she did get married. According to the law, she's much too young. That's good. I mean, I'm sorry, my dear. I appreciate you wanting to make the sacrifice, Marjorie. That's all right, Unky. You see, adopting a child is a very serious matter. And the husband can't be a boy like Wally Hoff. He must be a responsible adult. Oh, yes, of course. With a good physician. Now, that makes a lot of sense, Judge. And he should be a man of some standing in the community. Absolutely. I agree with you. That's the kind of a man who should get married and adopt a baby. You're right, Judge. Someone just like you, Gilda. Yeah, someone... Huh? Me get married? <laughs> well, what do you say, Gilda? Uh, come on, children. Yes, Dan. <laughs> Don't wait. Enter Parquet's big $50,000 contest now. Send a suggested name for the Gildersleeve baby and go after one of those 721 prizes being awarded. 20 1949 Ford sedans, 200 beautiful General Electric radios, 100 Cory coffee makers, 100 Toastmaster Electric pop-up toasters, and all kinds of cash prizes. But this second week's contest closes in three days. So, quickly write a suggested name for the Gildersleeve baby girl on an entry blank, obtain at your dealers. Then, send entry with one red end flap from a package of Parquet Margarine and your name and address to Parquet Margarine, Box 736, Chicago 77, Illinois. Don't forget that Parquet red end flap. But hurry, this week's contest closes this Saturday midnight. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. Good night. It was written by Gene Stone and Jack Robinson with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Wall saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Lady, when you buy cheese, you're getting a bargain in nutrition. Cheese prices have come down, and cheese is a main dish food, a protein food. Actually, ounce for ounce, no other basic food matches cheese for high-quality, complete protein, for calcium, phosphorus, and other nutrients from milk. So cook with cheese often. The next time you shop, get one of Kraft's famous pasteurized process varieties. Medium Mellow Kraft American, Sharp Old English, or, for rich yet mild cheddar flavor, get the delicious cheese food Velveeta. Yes, golden good lower-cost cheese is a bargain in nutrition. This is NBC.